Okay, so it's late in the afternoon. Uh, you must be tired already, huh? Ready for one more hard session? <laughs> it's actually not, not that hard. I'm actually kind of tired, especially my legs. We just, I'm just coming back from Half Dome, big hike. <laughs> okay, so who of you guys uh, have, is using regular expressions on a regular basis? About 30%, I would say. Um, who is using it once in a while? About half. And who is quite new to regular expressions? Two. OK. So um, the presentation is actually tailored to beginners. But uh, towards the end, uh, we also have some advanced stuff. So I think uh, there's something for, for everybody here. So if you look at uh, this example here, uh, it, looks, it really looks like gibberish, right? <laughs> if you're not familiar with uh, regular expressions. But halfway through the presentation, uh, we clearly will understand that. If you have any questions, uh, please ask at any time. OK, so a little bit about myself. So I'm the founder of uh, Twiki, which is an enterprise wiki, probably the first enterprise wiki out there used by thousands of companies. I provide consulting services. Uh, I lead the open source project and also provide consulting services on the open source project. Um, for companies using Twiki. Um, I am also now more and more involved in photography. I also co-authored the Wikis for Dummies book. And, yeah, okay. So, uh, regular expressions is mainly about manipulating text, or like looking at text and mani manipulating text. Well, there, there's also an the older conventional way uh, you can manipulate uh, text. So here are some ex uh, examples in procedural Perl. So to get an index, to get a substring or out of a, of a string, the length of a string, uh, the, the split and join. So we don't go into details, but you're, you're probably familiar with this in other languages or in Perl if you're using Perl. So there's also object-oriented way to manipulate text, uh, but that's basically just also a very simple uh, uh, things. So what are regular expressions? So if you go to Wikipedia, it says, in computing, a regular expression is a, sp a specific pattern that provides concise and flexible means to match, specify, and recognize strings of text. And so uh, the main point I would say here is uh, concise and flexible. So uh, that's the uh, key power of regular expressions. So why do we want to use regular expressions? So in a way, you, you can look at this as like a wild card on steroids. So instead of having a uh, star dot txt and regular expression would be a, uh, a dot star backslash dot txt and a dollar. Okay. If you're not familiar, we will learn uh, what that actually means. But the key point is uh, you can process large amounts of uh, text uh, very, very quickly. So the performance is, is actually quite amazing of uh, regular expressions. If you look at the right here, uh, that's just a snippet uh, code uh, from the Twiki source code written in Perl. So uh, Twiki has its own markup language that we call TML, Twiki markup language. And uh, we use maybe 200 regular expressions to turn uh, the, that markup into HTML before it's delivered to the browser. So again, so it's extremely fast, but also there's a learning curve. But that's the purpose uh, why we are here at this session. A uh, little joke here, but let's skip that. So this the presentation is basically tailored for one hour. Yes, question? Uh, that depends on the language and the language version. Uh, so in Perl, I think before five, uh, Perl 5.8, uh, it was not really support for Unicode. Uh, later uh, uh, versions have full Unicode uh, support uh, so that you can apply regular expressions on, uh, unic on strings that uh, are Unicode. Uh, with other languages, I'm actually not too familiar, but like, or except for JavaScript, I think it just works out of the box as well with Unicode. Yep. Okay, 
So now uh, let's first look at uh, regular expression, uh, like how it is used. So one is a test. So you want to test if something matches in a string, and then you do something. So that's the if uh, statement. And in the, this is the Perl syntax here, uh, dollar string equal, and the tilde sign, and then m is the match slash and some expression slash. So that's the syntax in Perl. Uh, in, uh, in uh, for example, JavaScript, uh, it's, it's basically the other way, way around. You have the string object dot match, and in parentheses uh, with uh, slashes, uh, you specify the regular expression. But it's basically the same thing. So that's uh, one purpose is to test for uh, a match. The second purpose is to do a search and replace. And in the uh, Perl way, it's uh, again, uh, you have a string that can be manipulated. So equal uh, the tilde. And then S for search, uh, the first pair between the slash slash is what you're searching for. That's a regular expression. And then the second part uh, is what you want to replace it with. And in uh, JavaScript, those other languages, uh, it's basically a string object dot replace. And then uh, the first parameter is regular expression. And the second parameter is what you want to replace with. OK. Uh, some other exam example here. So uh, you want to split up a string, uh, that, uh, meaning uh, that, ha that has a comma and maybe option spaces before and after the comma. So there, that's in Perl syntax. You split it up. Uh, you, you have the string. You split it up. Uh, you you, you uh, pipe that into a grep, and uh, you have to resolve uh, as, a, uh, as, as an array. And there are other things as well, uh, like pause, uh, other syntax as well that, that we won't go into detail. Uh, who is using Perl uh, in here? So only two, so not many, so. May I turn that into a question? Yes. Can we do this in, bra in browser without explicit, as against in a separate program that we write? Can we do this in Python? Uh, in a browser, you mean uh, in, as part of a JavaScript uh, that runs in the browser? No, no, in, for instance, in a command line. On ah, I see, yes, yes. Uh, there is a uh, to to test or try out regular expressions. That's it. That's a question yeah. online. Yes. Say you're on the Google browser or the Microsoft. Yes. Yes. Uh, there is. Uh, let me quickly run to the end of the presentation. Uh, that's yes. So if we go here, let me open that up in a new. So here uh, you can uh, specify a regular expression, and it will render uh, it, uh, the, the result actually as a flowchart that you see here. So let's let's table that for a moment, and uh, let's get to back uh, back to this uh, uh, later in the presentation. Okay. So now, uh, in this presentation, we have some color code. So anything that you see in red means that's a regular expression, or regex. Anything that you uh, see in green uh, is uh, that's uh, if we have a string and the reg apply the reg regular expression, the green part indicates what we are actually matching. OK, so now let's dive into details. So if you, as a regular expression, uh, just have a regular uh, like a character, like an L, it will match a single character, just that, that one character. So if you have a string called hello world, it will match the first L. Okay. And if you uh, run it again, uh, the pointer will point to the second L, etc. Then you have, uh, uh, if you have two characters like O and R, it will match these two characters verbatim. So hello world, uh, it will match the OR in the world. So now uh, we have also meta characters. Uh, so that's a parenthesis, square brackets, uh, curly bracket, 
brackets, etc. So these have special meanings. So if you want to actually, uh, for example, uh, go uh, so scan for a period, then you have to escape the period with a backslash. So backslash dot means a dot. If you omit the backslash, uh, backslash dot has a special meaning. And so and the special meaning is basically any character that's not a new, a new line. So it will stop at the first word, uh, first, at the first character, the H. So then uh, there's a concept of character sets. So that means with square bracket, it means like any of these characters that you specify uh, will be a match. So OE, uh, if you have the, the character class OE, uh, in Hello World, the first uh, word that we match is an E. And if you run it again, the second one will be the O of the Hello. And uh, so here's one example. So, so this regular expression H and then a character class EA and then LLO that matches hello, but also the German hello with E. Right. Then uh, with character cl uh, sets, you can use a dash to indicate a range. And it's basically the ASCII dash, uh, ASCII range that you can specify. But so meaning lowercase a to lowercase z that's that uh, range, right? So this is a little bit more complex the regular expression with the uh, sharp symbol. And then 0 9 a f. So that's uh, one hex character, uh, lowercase hex character, basically. And we repeat that uh, six times, and that's basically a, an HTML color indication indicator. OK, uh, so then. Uh, with the character set, we also can say we don't want we want to have the opposite. Wh whatever is specified, uh, 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 we want to have the the opposite. So and that's with the uh, leading caret uh, within the square brackets. So uh, meaning uh, anything that's not an X uh, uh, will be ignored, or and anything that that's an X will be. So so we will basically. Uh, negate it. Yeah. Uh, so it's a it's a double capital W that we are looking for, followed by anything that's not an X. So in that uh, uh, we have a match because because we find a capital W and an O which is not an X. And the same thing also applies for uh, range uh, a range, right? So that's not a uh, digit. Uh, so. If you have an ID 3735, it will stop at the I because that's a, not a digit. Any questions? Okay, so, so far, pretty basic. So now uh, there are some shorthands for character sets. And that's uh, backslash something. So backslash D is uh, a digit. So it's basically the same like uh, uh, angle bracket caret 0-9. Equivalent. It's, it's just faster, faster to write, and then backslash s, lowercase s, that's a white space, so which includes space tabs and line breaks. Uh, so it will match. It will stop at the first break between uh, uh, hello and world, and then the slash uh, or backslash w uh, that uh, matches a word character which is defined as alphanumeric characters and underscore. Kind of arbitrary de definition, but that's what it is. And so uh, if you have uh, a regular expression of backslash s, uh, backslash w, that means we are looking for a space followed by a character. So that's the space and w that we will match. Okay. Uh, continuing backslash t, uh, that max, uh, that's a tab character. Backslash r, a return and a carriage return, or matches a carriage return. Uh, backslash n, uh, line feed. And then rn uh, matches a uh, carriage return followed by a line feed. So that's the window specific. So you, if you would, uh, want, for example, if you, or that's, that's a question, how would you 
scan a text file for new lines uh, and you don't know if the file is Windows or Linux. Sorry? Look, yes, no, right, so you, you can use, exactly, so you can use a, a character set, so square brackets, and then a backslash R, uh, backslash N. It doesn't matter which uh, way it comes first, right? Mm -hmm. And then, but there's a trick that we don't know yet, uh, so you don't know if it is one uh, character or two characters, so you need to then specify one or two characters, and we will look how, later how we do that. Yes. So, uh, so you also can specify by the hexadecimal index, so backslash x, and then the hexadecimal index. So that, that's basically ASCII or uh, UTF-8 specific. For Unicode, it looks a little bit different. Okay, so we already actually talked about the dot. So a dot matches a single character except line breaks. So uh, in Hello World, it's, it stops or it finds uh, the H. Then uh, the, well, that's basically the long version of the dot is uh, a character class that's not a new line, and or here, not a new line uh, uh, or a line feed on Windows. And then, or if you do the, the dot in, in Hello, uh, it can be any character, so it matches hello, uh, H, uh, X, L, L, O, or whatever uh, the second character is. Uh, actually, I go back to the, the last example. So when you write a regular expression, it's uh, always a question, well, uh, is this what I'm writing good enough? So often it's like a, uh, you, don't, you don't want to be perfect. So in this example, uh, we want to scan for the English or German way of saying hello, right? And, and, the, and the dot does that, but it also matches more. Uh, like you just get false positives. So it's a, it's a, it's a question, how accurate do, do we want to be with regular expressions? And that's just up to your discretion. Okay, so now uh, let's talk about anchors. So an anchor basically says we want to start uh, from the very beginning of the string or also match to the very end of the string. So the, the, car the caret at the very beginning of a regular expression means let's look for uh, something that starts at the very beginning of the string. Right? So uh, it matches the start of the string. That's basically just indicated by the very beginning uh, in that yellow line, that, ah, the green line that you see. Um, then the dollar is the opposite, so it matches the very end of the string. And so, for example, at the very beginning, if you have a caret and an H, uh, that's a match for the string, but if you have a caret and a W, that's a no match, because the W is somewhere in the middle of the string, not in the beginning. Okay, then we have a backslash B, which is defined as a word boundary. So, and the word uh, is the defined again as this uh, backslash w that we learned before. So alphanumeric uh, uh, and underscore. So at any boundary, first time it's at the beginning of the h, second times after the o, third times after the space, right? And then the fourth time after the d. Then the backslash capital B uh, is the opposite of the lowercase b. So, you can, so, so for any space between two words, you get two matches for the backslash b? Uh, only on a boundary. So let, let, let's say, for example, in the hello world, you have hello space space world, okay. right? Oh, okay. so, so then it will match after the o and then uh, before the w. Oh, uh -huh. Okay, so now, uh, or and and. So if you use a, uh, the pipe symbol, that's a logical or, right? So that's a dog or cat or fish. And if you have I like cats and dogs, it will find cat, the singular version, right? 
and if you run it uh, again, uh, continue to run, then it will find dog. Right. So what about logical end? That's possible too. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Uh, on the right hand side, you, you see like this kind of flow chart. That's kind of useful to visualize uh, a regular expression. Okay, so uh, a question mark. Question mark basically says anything that's before the question mark is optional. So zero or one of the previous uh, thing that you have, character in this case. So in this case, color, uh, the U is optional. That means you, you, you can match the British or the English spelling of color. Right. So a star means uh, whatever is before, we uh, want to match uh, zero or multiple times. So not just one time, but multiple times. So in this case here, uh, we scan for a uh, angle bracket, uh, then A to Z or A to Z capital, followed by A to Z or A to Z capital or zero to through nine, and uh, star. So it means like the, that character set uh, is followed by the star. That means the whole character set is optional. Right? And so that's, that's basically a simple way to specify a HTML tag. Right? So the first character set uh, is exactly one character, so, so that, is, that is required. Uh, so that matches, for example, the A tag uh, or the B for bold, right? And then uh, the second set is optional. So for example, if you have uh, HTML tag TT, so the first T is the first character set, the second T is, is the second one, right? Um, then uh, the plus. Uh, the plus says we want to match exactly one or multiple times. So at least once it, uh, it has to match. So if you do uh, sharp uh, 0 to 9 or A through F plus, that means that uh, it's uh, like it can indicate a color. So it will match the sharp thing symbol uh, and then any uh, alpha or hex uh, number, any numbers, uh, number of hex numbers. So if you have, have a regular expression like this, so it looks like we are uh, uh, scanning for an HTML tag, but what's the problem with this regular expression to scan H an HTML tag? Any idea? It's not compliant with uh, the HTML syntax. In what case? Yes, exactly, that's the point. So this regular expression sees says uh, we want to have exactly one or more characters, any of these. And the first one a character, a single character could be a, a zero or a five, which is not legal in HTML. Right. Yep, any questions? Okay, let's continue. Now let's, let's talk about repetitions. Okay, so, so far we learned uh, zero or one, or one, zero or multiple, or one to multiple. And now we can be even more specific. If you use a curly braces and a number, uh, it says we want to have exactly six times whatever precedes that, uh, uh, that uh, repetition, right? So in this case, uh, we have the sharp symbol followed by a hex code uh, exactly six times. So if you look at this color code here, it, uh, it captures everything that's green. So it omits the zero, zero at the end, right? So uh, that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, so match a number between 1,000 and 9,099. So uh, here uh, we say we anchor it by a backslash B by word boundary, right, on both sides. Then, that is a good point. Yes, uh -huh. right. So the, it won't match the comma. So if you omit the comma, it will uh, match. Right. So if you have a, have a, have a string uh, that says value space three five five uh, three five zero zero, it finds a word boundary. It has in the very beginning, uh, but afterwards that's not an, not followed by a, a number. So it just keeps going. After the E is a match for the boundary, but it's not followed by a number. 
then it's a space uh, which is a, a two something else, it's word boundary, followed by number three. Okay, that's the start where we st start scanning, right? And then it matches uh, exactly three times. So uh, th uh, the first one is uh, the three, and then followed by another character class that's exactly three times, so totally four characters. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, if uh, and, and if you do a comma, like after the first character class, do a comma and a question mark, right? And then it uh, then it matches uh, with or without comma. Right? And if the first one is a zero, uh, that looks a little bit odd too. Yes, oh, right. Exactly. So that, that's the whole point with, with regular expression. So how how accurate do we want to go, right? So you can go very accurate, but then uh, the regular expression will be quite long, and it will take longer, a little bit more brain power <laughs> to do it exactly. Okay, so the, the curly braces with a single number indicates exactly a number of repetitions that we want. And uh, if you use a comma and a second number, like here, uh, curly brace 2 comma 6, uh, so that's between 2 and 6. We expect between 2 and 6 uh, uh, repetitions for whatever is proceeding, right? So this here uh, we match uh, for a dot, a literal dot, followed by A to Z, uh, upper lower case, between two and six times. And so that could match a, uh, and then a backslash uh, slash, followed by a, by a literal slash, right? So uh, if you have a, new, a URL uh, dot something, that's a pretty good uh, indication if it is a valid URL or not. Yes? So it doesn't match Bart because it's not followed by the It doesn't match, sorry? It doesn't match the word Bart. Ah, yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So the regular expression uh, has also, like, uh, initially might find something that matches, but then uh, the regular expression continues, and then, like, with the, the backslash, uh, the, 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 the literal slash, so then it realizes, oh, okay, so that actually doesn't work. Let, let me try more un until it finds the first one. There are differences Where between windows and Unix as the front slash and the back slash. Yes. In which dialect do you broaden your uh, Well, yeah, so with, uh, in this particular example as a URL, it's always regular slash. But uh, if you want, like in the file system, forward or back sl backward uh, slash, then you can use here a character class, right? A character class, so ang uh, square bracket uh, with the backslash uh, uh, and uh, like backslash backslash that indicates a backslash, and backslash forward slash that in indicates a forward slash. Right. Okay. Good question. Okay. So now an important part is the greedy versus non-greedy uh, scanning. Right. Um, that's actually quite useful, so uh, uh, please uh, pay attention to this, uh, this slide here. So a greedy repetition basically tries to find a string uh, until the very end, right, uh, as much as possible. A non-greedy uh, uh, basically stops at the first uh, thing, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, with what I found, right? So if you look in more detail, so if we have a angle bracket, a dot plus uh, angle bracket close, right? So you might think uh, we are scanning just for a single uh, HTML tag, right? But uh, the plus basically is a greedy uh, scan. So it finds the first angle bracket, opening angle, angle bracket, and goes all the way to the very last angle bracket that, that it finds. So it's maybe not, not what we intended to do. So now, uh, so there's uh, either the non-greedy or lazy repetition. So it just basically scans ca carefully until it finds the first match. Yes, exactly. So if you have if a page uh, page long, a thousand characters uh, from the very first angle bracket open to the very last angle bracket uh, close, it will match. Okay, so now the non-greedy is uh, simple uh, by appending a uh, question mark to that uh, modifier. So a plus, 
question mark is a lazy or a non-greedy scan, right? So this uh, does actually more what we intend to do in this example, right? So we scan for the opening angle bracket and then cautiously we go forward and find the first closing angle bracket. And that's, where, that's what we capture. Okay. Uh, then there are other ways, so there's similar, it's a little bit faster, so on performance, so usually you don't need to worry about uh, performance. Regular expressions are amazingly fast, uh, only if you have a very high transaction or really concerned about performance, you can look into some ways of optimizing. You can read up on that, so we won't talk about this, but there are, there are ways to marginally increase the performance uh, of regular expressions. Now, uh, grouping and back references. So, uh, when you uh, scan for a string, you want to mark and maybe extract certain subsets uh, of that, uh, that reg uh, expression or that uh, string that you're scanning. And so you do that by uh, enclosing uh, the words you're, you want to capture in uh, brackets, regular brackets. So here, if the regular expression is ready, comma, space, set in parentheses, it basically captures whatever is within the parentheses, right? And then you can use it as a dollar one later on. So that that comes in handy when you, when you do a, a, a replacement. Or, or here, it's just a test. So in a test, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, well, actually, yeah. So if uh, string, uh, then uh, ready, comma, set, then print, found, and then dollar one. So, so dollar one is basically set with whatever we captured in that uh, parenthesis. If you have uh, multiple parentheses, it's dollar one, dollar two, dollar, dollar three, et cetera. Okay? Uh, so let's test for options. Yeah, so, right, so if you do a ready comma and then a, a bracket and a question mark, that means like the whole thing uh, that's preceding a question mark is optional, right? So it could be there or it doesn't have to be there, right? So uh, here, ready, comma, set, uh, it will match to the set, but if it is not there, uh, it, will, it will still match. Okay, so there's also a way to, uh, for example, this question mark, you want to make it optional, but you don't want to uh, capture that string for later use. So you, you can uh, tell the regular expression engine to basically not capture it, and that's uh, by adding this question mark colon, right? So that, that's not so much used. Uh, so usually you don't need to worry about capturing uh, stuff. Okay. Now let's go uh, to uh, how we can use grouping for search and replace. So if you have a string that that is the question and uh, we want to switch the first two words, words, so we want to get a result of is that the question, right? So what you can do uh, in the regular expression, we look for a word character plus in parentheses. So that's meaning uh, all the word characters are the first word basically in the sentence followed by a not word, so basically white space, one or more, followed by another word uh, character set, uh, like, yeah, uh, and, they, and we capture these three into dollar one, dollar two, dollar three, right? So then uh, in, in Perl, it's to search the regular expression and replace it with dollar three, dollar two, dollar one. We basically just reverse that, what we found. Sorry? The yes. Uh -huh. uh, well, yeah, so we, we want to switch the first two, but there's a space in between, and we want to preserve the space, right? Yeah. So uh, if you look what we matched, so that is, because it's a word, a space, another word, and then the result is just uh, because of dollar three, dollar two, dollar one we switch the first two words. Yes? Could you not replace black hat in the middle bracket? 
could you not use the backslash? Yes, exactly. So you could use the backslash s. Same thing. Yes. Is there any, any magic no, not really. Uh -huh. There's no it, it, regular expressions. You, know, you can do it in many different ways. Uh, uh, there might be very slight difference in performance, but usually just don't worry about that. Uh -huh. Do whatever you're familiar with. Right. Okay. That's correct, yes. Yes, if you have other special characters uh, in there, uh, then you would need to tweak uh, your regular expression, right? Yes, correct. Yes, exactly. So then instead of the backslash w, you use the, the square brackets, and then uh, uh, backslash w for that uh, word character set, right? followed by a umlaut, for example, uh, for uh, foreign characters, or uh, exclamation point, or whatever else you'll want to capture. Okay. So now, uh, that's basically it. So now we already uh, can read and understand uh, this very complicated looking, uh, uh, almost like a formula, or a regular expression, right? So what this does here, uh, it, it uh, validates a username at a domain dot uh, some extension, right? So, so basically it validates an email address. So uh, within a string, so there were, we start with a slash B, so it can be a space or some other stuff can be uh, in front of what we are looking for, right? And it ends on, again with a slash B, so there could be some other stuff at the end as well. Okay, so let's start. So initially, so we have a character class, a character set, uh, backslash w, so it's a word character, a dot, uh, that's a, actually, a, you, you, you could write it as a backslash dot, but, but because it's within or inside a character set, the backslash is optional. Right. So it could be a dot or a percent or a plus or a minus. And uh, the minus, as you have learned, a, a or a dash b or a dash z, so is is a range, right? So you, you also could backslash the, the the minus, but if you put it at the end, uh, you don't have to. Okay, so that uh, so that's basically the username. So valid username uh, for email address, you can have also minus and plus and uh, even percent. I didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, so that's apparently legal. And it's a, a, a plus, so it means like one or more of these characters. Followed by an at symbol, followed by another uh, uh, character set uh, that can be a word, uh, alphanumeric, a dot, or a dash, at least one, followed by a dot, followed by uh, A to Z or A to Z capital uh, from two to six characters. Uh, what's the minus uh, where? Uh, after the plus. So that, that's basically a, a literal minus. So uh, you, you can have first name dash last name at something, right? Uh -huh. So, yes. Okay, so the, the, the plus within uh, the character set is a literal plus, oh, yeah. right? And so is the percent of plus. Yes, correct. Yes, okay. yes. Uh -huh. Did I hear you correctly? Did you get a backslash in that first character set is optional? The, for the, yes, the backslash is, uh, is optional, but you could use it uh, for the dot, for the plus, and for the minus. So not for the w. Yes, exactly, yes. Okay. Yes, so not for the w. For the it's required for the W because uh, the backslash W has, has a special meaning. But the, the dot, the plus and minus also have a special meaning. But uh, within a, uh, the character set, uh, it's optional. Actually, it would be more consistent to, to require it as well, but <laughs> that's how it is defined. OK, so uh, that looks pretty cool, right? And it's e relatively easy to understand. But now, uh, open a new tab. 
So if you want to make it really, really uh, RFC compliant, the regular expression, uh, it looks actually quite complicated. Yes. 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 Yes, correct. Yes. So uh, uh, may I may repeat. So the last character set uh, has to be either from between two and six uh, characters and has to be a, a word boundary, followed by word boundary. Yes. So, so this uh, catches uh, uh, with also multiple dot after the add sign because the dot we have in the first character class, uh, character says after the add symbol, right? But now, uh, so th this looks already pretty good and is, is, is good enough to validate an email address for most cases. Now, if you want to make it really RFC 822 uh, compliant, uh, the regular expression looks like this. For the same thing. Well, yeah, just uh, to, to really like check everything, uh, intrinsic details uh, to be compliant, to, you are 100% 100 sure is compliant with that RFC. Right. Sorry? Uh, this, I'm actually not, not sure. Uh, this is probably written by hand, I guess. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, you, you can't really say it. it. It's up to your judgment, like how accurate you want to go, right? Yeah. So I, I would like uh, for my web ap application, I would use this one here, and I would be totally happy, right? Yeah. yeah yes. Uh, the regular expression engine uh, can handle very large amounts of text to scan, and the regular reg expression itself can be also very large. So. Uh huh. If a human uh, can make sense, yes, yes. Uh, so if you look uh, uh, at these, each, so these are basically the, if you look at the very beginning here, the uh, question mark dot, that means basically we, we, want, we don't want to capture uh, whatever we, we specify uh, in there. So yeah, so it, it, it is readable. But uh, it's it's a pain, so I, I wouldn't want <laughs> to learn that. Yeah. I'm just looking at that and you see going, okay, what if they change the standard and now app symbols are okay in the username? Uh -huh. And just trying to figure out how to alter that regular <laughs> Yeah. That. Right, exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Why do you exactly just have code that goes uh -huh. and checks rules? Yes, uh-huh. They allow icing app symbols in usernames. Yeah. Yes. Than regular expressions, um, no. With uh, right, so, so with uh, just normal object-oriented programming or uh, or procedural programming, you, you you can also test for many different cases, one after the other. Uh, it's it's a judgment call. So I personally, I, I really like the regular expression. It's it's very concise, uh, and for all at runtime, it, it's amazingly fast. Uh, is there a question, is there a tool uh, where you can specify in maybe in a higher level uh, uh, what you want to do when it spits out a regular expression? I'm not aware of this. Uh, there might be, yes. Is there a grammar for this? Is there a grammar for this? Well, a regular expression uh, is actually a tight grammar, um, but the regular, regular expression implementations uh, are a little bit loose, not uh, exactly strict to the grammar. So if you go to the Wikipedia article, uh, it's relatively long. It, it, it explains it pretty good if you read that. Okay, so now about performance. So while uh, maybe nobody is using any more cold fusion, it's kind of an outdated uh, language, but it's uh, quite uh, extremely slow. Uh, uh, native cold fusion, but cold fusion with regular expression is very slow. That's just like 10K lines of, of CSV file. Uh, and with regular ex with uh, native Perl, including the I/O, it's like 50 milliseconds. If you have it already in memory, it's 3.5 milliseconds. So it's quite fast. Okay, so we have to speed up a little bit. 
uh, now modifiers. So a modifier, uh, that's the thing that you see at the end here, the GE. So the modifiers basically tweaked uh, what you want to do with the regular expression. So uh, if you have a regular expression and you don't have any modifier, it, it just scans for the very first one. If you use uh, the G, it means global. So it says do it uh, as many times as you find in that string, right? So here, do it, uh, in this case, we have a string. We search for a word boundary followed by a single character. And we do here uppercase uh, of what we captured here, dollar one, right? So we are basically up, we, we turn this, so this is my reg, regex world into a uh, capitalized uh, string, right? That's because we apply the G, right? And then in Perl, that's a little bit Perl specific, you, you have an E for execute. So usually what you specify here is just another literal string that might include dollar one, dollar two, right? But if you use the E, uh, you also can add functions like the UC uh, for uppercase. Right. In uh, other languages, uh, it works a little bit different than modifiers, but it's the same concept. Okay, uh, then we have uh, look around. Okay, so, so if you have uh, a C, so here we, we want to scan for a C and followed by a K, but not any other character. But we don't capture the K. We, we only want to make sure that it's a C and we want to capture the C uh, followed by a K but the K is not part of the regular expression where, where the pointer is. So think of the regular expression as always a pointer that moves along the string, right? So sometimes it's useful to test what, what's coming afterwards, but uh, I still want to apply a regular expression afterwards uh, uh, for additional stuff. And so, so with, the, with the positive look ahead, you, you can say, uh, I want to look for a C followed by a K, so it matches the quick but not the active. And then the uh, negative look uh, ahead uh, is the same thing, but just not uh, followed by uh, the character K. And the same also for look behind. So th this is not used that much, but maybe you don't need to remember right now, but just remember or keep in mind, okay, uh, there's this concept of look, ahead, uh, look behind and look ahead. And if you need it, just look up the documentation. Uh, correct. Uh, so the question is, uh, the bracketing here, uh, is it capturing or not? It's, it's actually not capturing because, because we have this question mark which indicates uh, it's not capturing. So if you want to capture, well, no, uh, it's, a, it's a look ahead so it doesn't capture anything at all. So it uh, wouldn't make sense to uh, add in, uh, in and close another bracket. Okay, now logical end. Okay. That's a fun one, right? So if you want, let, let's say I want to test for foo and bar. The string has foo and bar, but I don't know if foo is first or last, right? So you could do that foo dot star bar or a bar dot star foo. Works perfectly. But if an n combination of, of 10 uh, items, it gets quite unwieldy. So now you can use actually positive look ahead, and it's quite fast, right? So uh, remember, the regular expression tries to uh, match and just go and go and go, and at some point it might fail, and if not, it just keeps going. Uh -huh. And uh, at the very end, uh, if, if, it, if, if it is match, yay, uh, we have done it, right? So now we apply the positive look ahead. So that means we anchor from the very beginning of the string, uh, we look for a positive look ahead. So we, we require that somewhere a dot star uh, is a foo. Anywhere in the string from the very beginning to the last, right? So if, if this is the case, if this is a match, we go to the next one. If, if this is not the case, the whole regular ex expression stops at that point, right? Okay, so now let, let's, uh, let's Assume foo is in, in, in the string. 
So now it, it's next uh, look, positive look ahead. Same thing with uh, bar, right? Et cetera, et cetera, right? At any point, if one of these fails, the, regular, the whole regular expression fails. In, in other words, that's an end. The dot star, right, uh, a dot means any character, right. and a star, uh, zero to multiple times. Okay, so that means no character, means no, none of the words? Uh, it means none or more, right? So, so that means like the foo could be at the very beginning of the string right. or somewhere in the middle. So why do you use the dot, not just the star? Uh, the star by itself has no meaning. Okay, uh, uh, back references, uh, what time do we have? We are now five minutes over. Should we continue a little bit more, like five more minutes? Yes. Okay, good. So, uh, we have back references in reg uh, reg uh, regular expressions. So, we learned about capturing and using in the replacement part, right? But sometimes within the regular expression itself, we want to reference something that we scanned before in, this, in one and the same regular expression, right? And so here is, is an example. So we have a text. This is italic text, so it's basically an HTML string. And we want to scan for a uh, HTML tag and find the matching end tag, right? So uh, we, uh, we don't want to match a, a slash B tag, right? We want to make sure it's the same tag, but the first tag can be anything, right? We don't know which uh, tag it is. That, that's where this back reference comes in handy. So, so if you look at this uh, string here, so we have an angle bracket. So we start, we look for an angle bracket. Then uh, we capture something, so A to Z, uh, followed by A to Z or 0 to 9, uh, which is an optional, followed by a word boundary, and then a not uh, uh, angle bracket, so anything that's not an, uh, an end bracket, uh, then uh, that's a star, so that's mul zero multiple times, and then we expect an angle, uh, closing angle bracket, so that, that basically scans over anything that's uh, an HTML tag that might have some param parameters, like class equal or so, right? And then we have another, another uh, capturing group, uh, dot star question mark. So that's a non-greedy, we learned because of question mark, followed by uh, angle bracket, uh, a slash. So we have the escape slash, right? And then a backslash one. Or, and the backslash one is the reference what we captured uh, before. So. The backslash one is basically this uh, part here that we captured. So that's the i tag. Um, that is a good question. That actually uh, wouldn't match the lowercase. That, that's a bug, right? So I could, in this regular, in uh, Perl specific, I could uh, add a modifier uh, that, that's an i for ignore case. And then they will run. So you're, that, that's a good point. So that, that's actually bugging the presentation here. Okay. Um, so, yep. Any questions here? The, what's the scope of slash one slash two? Right. So, the slash one slash two etc. Back references, whatever you captured with uh, the parentheses. Right, so, so here, the backslash one is the first parentheses, uh, the first uh, captured group, which is the tag itself. Yep. Okay, so then, uh, now it's getting really complicated. <laughs> uh, a little bit more uh, challenging. So, regular expressions are great. Uh, for just linear scanning of a string. Now, what if you have a kind of a tree structure, right? So in, in this particular case, uh, the Twiki uh, Enterprise Collaboration Platform has a plugin 
uh, chart plugin basically do uh, formulas uh, in, in a table. So that, there you need to basically decipher uh, uh, the, uh, the, a string and then call the functions, right? And so then uh, usually you, you, uh, you do that uh, with some grammar and uh, a tree, build up a tree. And I ask myself, is it possible to use regular expressions to uh, uh, capture this and call these uh, proper functions? And then the answer is actually, yes, it is possible. Not in a single scan, but uh, you do it uh, with two scans. So the first scan, you scan over uh, the parentheses and just label them with numbers indicating the, how deep you are, right? So that's the first scan. And then the second scan, uh, you, you, you know now for the dollar round, uh, I want to find the, the first closing uh, one bracket. Uh, and for the time diff, I want uh, uh, the first closing uh, bracket, uh, like, yes, uh, at level two, et cetera. So if you want the details, uh, you can find that uh, on, in the presentation. Um, by the way, this presentation is available on twiki.org. So if you just go to twiki.org, on the left box, there's a small link called regex. So you'll find the presentation, and then you can follow the, these links. OK, um, so there is a regular expression puzzle, and it's actually really complicated. So I'm working quite often with regular, regular expressions. It took me uh, over a day to solve this. So um, I think uh, we're pretty much at the end here. So uh, online references, uh, I won't go through here. Just go to the presentation. You will see those. Uh, you can visualize regular expressions by typing it in, in this tool here. And then uh, there's also uh, the regular expression tester. That, that was your question in, in the beginning. Uh, you can add a regular expression, and then you, it nicely highlights uh, what, what it finds, including the, the modifiers. Okay, so that's basically it. And yep. thank you.